From beautiful Dahlonega, Georgia, Skybox is on the air. Hello everyone, Craig Corbin here at Haynes and Carolyn Hill Stadium on the UNG campus, home of the UNG Nighthawks softball team, the 2015 NCAA Division II National Champions. In future editions of Skybox, we'll have much more on this championship team, including a visit with head coach Mike Davenport and several members of that championship team. We got a great show for you today with baseball, golf, but we start with football. An NFL preseason just around the corner with preseason games ready to roll. Last month, local fans and media alike got a preview of the Atlanta Falcons as the team held their mandatory veterans minicamp at the team's Flowery Branch headquarters complex. Falcons coaches had the team running, passing, and most importantly, stretching. Mr. Jonathan Simmons here for Skybox TV. Well, now I get a chance to really live up to my nickname, the Minister of Sports. We're out here at Flowery Branch where the Atlanta Falcons, that's right, your hometown football team, gets it in and practices and gets set for the upcoming season. You know, I think about uh, a guy that played some basketball. He said, practice? What do you mean by practice? Well, you got to practice. At practice drill and rehearse here as the Falcons get set, brand new coach Dan Quinn, and he's all about making it happen here on the field, talking about speed, talking about competition. Well, hey, let's go take a look. The public looked on as players ran drills in the early summer heat and humidity. A number of the Falcon veterans took part, including quarterback Matt Ryan. AIB Skybox was on location as well and talked with rookie cornerback Michael Lee about his upbringing right here in Georgia. Each and every day you find out the world is getting smaller and smaller and we're here at the Falcons camp and we found out that there's someone that uh, grew up right in our hometown in uh, right in McDonough, Georgia, right across from us at Eagles Landing High School. Michael Lee, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Well, listen, first of all, congratulations for you being out here. Uh, made it as a uh, free agent, I believe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. College free agent. How exciting is it for you to be able to come back? I'm sure you watched the Falcons when you were playing at Eagles Landing to actually be on the team. It feels like a dream every day, you know, I sit in my locker and look up and see the Falcons logo and it's like, wow, I, you know, I, I was still in shock until probably today when, when camp is over. I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm a Falcon right now. That's pretty cool. You've had an interesting journey. I went from Eagles Land. I think you uh, went to UMass for a little bit. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. I went to UMass for four years and then transferred to Fort Valley State for my second or my fifth year. This is really a, a big thing because not only are you obviously one of our local guys here from McDonough, but also went to an HBCU. Now, how was that? How was that experience? Uh, it was amazing. HBCUs, is, it's, just, it's a big family, you know what I mean? Just as soon as I stepped on campus, it felt like a family atmosphere. Everybody welcomed me with open arms, and I was just ready to get out there and get on the team and show them what I could do. Hey, speaking of family, one thing must be nice about coming home is that you got family all around you. I can look in the background here and see you got the mom and dad and everybody here just kind of around, family members. So it must be very exciting for them as well to be out here to support you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, I, I was at UMass for four years, and they could barely make it up to a game. You know, they made it to maybe like four or five games, and now that I'm here, they can come out to a local or open days like this and come to practice and everything. It, it means the world to not only them, but it means the world to me as well. No doubt if you make the team, I checked it on my watch. It takes about 29 minutes to get from uh, Stockbridge McDonough down to uh, the Georgia Dome. Listen, Michael, uh, we appreciate you stopping by and we look forward to uh, covering you for the rest of the season. Thank you, sir. You have a nice day. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for everything. Music plays an integral role in the Falcons' practice. Rock and rap anthems blare from a series of loudspeakers, creating a noisy, game day-like atmosphere for the players and forcing them to focus despite the heat and constant buzz of the music. Texas native and Falcons fullback Colin Mooney was one player, though, who had no problem with the heat. 
we're at the Falcons camp. I would say it's a cool thing, but it's not. It's uh, sweltering around 90 degrees. We have a young man who I think is uh, very prepared to handle this. Uh, Mr. Colin Mooney, welcome to our show, sir. Oh, thanks for having me. So now, originally you hail from Katy, Texas. I was here with one of the other guys. Yes, sir. Just outside of Houston, just west of Houston in Katy, Texas. That's right. So this is right in your bailiwick, huh? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, the heat's not not a huge factor for me. Just been used to it growing up in Houston. So, I mean, it's a, it's a hot, humid place down there, so. Yeah, I had, I had the misfortune to visit my brother I, about this time of year. I took one of those Super Saver fairs, and oh, boy, it was, I saw the heat waves coming off the pavement. Oh, yeah, it, it, can, pretty, it can get pretty warm down there. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different kind of heat, that's for sure. Well, listen, uh, you, you have an interesting story uh, coming here to the Falcons camp. First of all, a, a, a position that is not as heralded as it used to be playing fullback. Uh, how did you uh, get your start playing in the fullback position? Uh, playing in college, I actually played linebacker in high school and then uh, got re recruited by Army as a fullback. Um, so they said, we'll, give, we'll, uh, we'll let you play. You know, you can get a scholarship, and, but you're going to play fullback for us. So that's, that's how I got my start there. And then, uh, you know, I, I went in as a, as a blocking back my first three years, and then uh, we transitioned into the triple option, and, and that's when I started carrying the ball. So I kind of got to see both sides as far as being a blocking back and being a back that gets a lot of carries and carries the ball often. Talk about uh, obviously going with the uh, military academy, uh, a tremendous legacy there. Uh, I heard one of the other guys ask, and I'll ask it again. Uh, what type of influence has that had on you as far as conducting your business, both here on the field and off the field? Uh, it's taught me a lot uh, as far as, you know, how to be a professional, how to be disciplined, uh, mental toughness. Um, I know that, you know, I, I can get through anything if I put my mind to it uh, put, and focus on it. Um, so there's a lot of carryover from the military and, and West Point. Uh, to football and, and you know to training camp and, and what you're going through as far as being a professional athlete. So I think there's a lot of carry over there. Yeah, Mr. Mooney, listen, we appreciate you stopping by. We hope to hear more from you as the season goes on. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Well, what a great time it's been here, checking out all the great things that are going on behind the scenes as the Falcons get ready for the upcoming season. We're going to be covering the Falcons all year long, so keep it locked right on Skybox TV here on AIB. Well, if you want to find out more information in the interim, check me out online, www.realtalksports.net. On behalf of everybody at Skybox TV, your main man, the minister, saying God bless and have a great day. From the gridiron in Flowery Branch, right down I-985, we go to Cool Ray Field, home of the Gwinnett Braves, the AAA affiliate of Major League Baseball's Atlanta Braves, a relationship entering its 51st season, the longest relationship in AAA. One of the young guns that have made the transition from Gwinnett to Atlanta, Matt Whistler. It's a beautiful day, and we're at Cool Ray Field, the home of the AAA Gwinnett Braves, the farm system team for our Atlanta Braves. Whether you're 8 to 80, when the sun's out like this on a beautiful day, you know what time it is. It's baseball time, and AIB TV Skybox is going to bring you what's going on. G Brave fans get to enjoy all the action of live baseball in a state of the art facility that reflects a historic feel. The real draw, though, watching future Atlanta Brave hopefuls. One such player, Matt Whistler, who debuted with the Atlanta Braves June 19th versus the New York Mets, allowing only one run in eight innings in a two-to-one Braves victory. Skybox reporter Jonathan Simmons talked with a young right-hander. Hey, it's Man Minister Jonathan Simmons from Real Talk Sports and Skybox TV on AIB here in Atlanta. And we are just right up the road from the main club in Atlanta as we're here with the Gwinnett Braves with a young man who's been the centerpiece of a major trade here. Mr. Matt Whistler, welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. Hey, Matt, uh, what has it meant for you now coming over from the Padres? I know you've been asked this several times, but really being a part of a trade for a favorite Brave, uh, Kirk Pringle. Uh, you know, it's pretty cool. You know, they're able to give him up and to get me uh, shows they really want me here. Um, they think I can help this team win. So, obviously, uh, it's a good thing for me, good for my career. You know, they, they want me here. So, obviously, at some point in the near future, they have me in their plans to help the team win. And that's really <clears throat> what I'm here to do It's just get better down here, you know, get my stuff ready whenever I think I'm ready to go up and help the team win. Have you been able to enjoy some of the southern hospitality we have down here in Atlanta? Yeah, a little bit. Been able to go out a couple of times, you know, get out to see the city. I've been I've played down here growing up and stuff, so I know a little bit. Uh, I came down the off I have a buddy that moved down here. So I know a little bit of the area, but it's been nice to get out, you know, enjoy the town. Now, how important is it or was it mean to you as being a triple-A guy to be so close to the main club? In most places, you're, you know, almost a state away. No, it's nice. I mean, to know that I, even if I do get the call up, you know, I'm still going to stay in the same apartment. You know, nothing's really going to change. It's just where I'm going to play every day uh, will change. 
Anything in particular you're looking for during your time here as far as growth and pitches? I know you're a four-pitch guy. Anything you're working on special that you might want to try to bring to the big club or you're just going to keep it what brought you here? Yeah, just keep honing everything that I have, making everything I have more consistent, you know, getting the ball down in the zone a little better, uh, be able to command my off speed a little bit better. You know, I think I've gotten better with that curveball and changeup this year. Uh, right now, just really honing in on the slider, uh, get that back to where it needs to be. Matt, one of the things that a lot of guys do when they come to a club uh, is they are often involved in the community. Anything yet that you kind of gotten your eye on, a favorite foundation or charity that you think you might want to be involved in in your time here in Atlanta? Uh, I haven't really been you know, asked to do too much. Uh, there's some stuff I would say. I mean, it'd be cool to go see the hospital stuff, see the kids. Uh, that'd be one thing to be interested in doing. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff. Obviously, if I go up there to have the opportunity to go out in the city, uh, I would and, you know, I'd enjoy going out there and trying to help people, uh, get my name out of the community, help the community out a little. There's a man that seems to have it down pat here, Matt Whistler, a guy that's coming in as part of a big trade, but I think he's going to make some big things happen. For AIB TV, Minister Jonathan Simmons at the Gwinnett Braves. Whistler picked up his third win July 6th with a 5-3 victory in Milwaukee. The addition of Whistler, along with a number of other young pitchers, has yielded a number of wins for the Braves. Well, it was great to talk to another brave up-and-coming rising star, Matt Whistler. Matt came over in a big trade with the San Diego Padres for beloved brave Craig Crimdrill. Matter of fact, you're going to see lots of great things going on here from the AAA club as we come out and bring you some of the rising stars each and every month on Skybox. For more information, check us out at www.aibtv.com or go to my website, www.realtalksports.net. If you've been out to the fairways of Canton Golf Course in Cherokee County recently, you might have spotted a few former Atlanta Braves in action taking part in a celebrity golf tournament hosted by the man remembered for making the catch, former Braves center fielder Otis Nixon. Nixon shares the single game stolen base Major League record of six which he set on June 16, 1991. He also holds the Atlanta Braves single season stolen base record with 72 from that same season. But life wasn't always so sweet. Nixon underwent a dark period of his life and only through the love of Jesus Christ was he able to come out of that darkness. He started the Otis Nixon Foundation, a broad-based collaborative initiative which assists and helps restore the lives of underprivileged men, women, and children. AIB Skybox talked with Nixon along with other former Braves to learn more about the Otis Nixon Foundation and its involvement with the Turnaround Kids program. I'm Otis Nixon from Atlanta Braves with Otis Nixon Foundation and we're doing our first Turnaround Kids, uh, Turnaround Kids Golf Tournament. And I have Brad. You Brad, introduce yourself. Brad Mizell with P1 Group. Uh, we're really happy to be out here today to support the Otis Nixon Foundation and uh, Turnaround Kids. Uh, Turnaround Kids is a, a fantastic organization that that I've gotten to know through Otis and, and the church we go to together. Yeah. And um, uh, really glad to be out here today on a beautiful day uh, that God created for us. And uh, Amen. We, we're just going to have a really good time and, and uh, looking forward to it. We got a lot of celebrities out from Ryan Gant, John Rocker, Leo Mazzoni, and we can name a list. But P1 is one of the groups out of Kansas City that has been a big, you guys have been a great support for us from Appreciate day one. That. And we go to church with fellowship together. But it all starts with the corporate sponsors. And when they say, we want you to reach out. I got uh, three kids of my own, and I say I got 60 other kids. I got 63 kids. They still have to have needs. They got needs. They need clothes. They need supplies. And, and they don't go out there ask for anything. When we reach out to them, they're doing really good. Former Braves outfielder Andrew Jones also attended the event and had this to say. Well, I mean, I think when you go to events like this, um, you know, you see old teammates and you exchange numbers and you know, sometimes you, you, you have their number for a long time and sometimes you lose the numbers because phone change and all the stuff. But, um, you know, it's, it's always fun to, you know, stay in touch with, 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 with old teammates and, and see how they're doing, how their family doing, how the kids growing up. So um, it's always fun. Well, you know, Otis is a good friend, and, and when you have Otis and, and Marquise Grissom and, and Andrew Jones, and you see Kevin Brown, and uh, and, and, and you know, we were a close knit group. Uh, I think one of the reasons why we won, number one, we had talent, but we had a group of guys that got along extremely well, and uh, you know. You don't hear about all the guys that give back to the community. All you hear about is the guys that maybe get in trouble, and that's a very low percentage. So this is what professional athletes do, and this is what it's all about. This is the good part that doesn't make news. Former All-Star Ron Gant couldn't resist helping out a friend. Athletes from every sport, we like to contribute to the community. 
Otis has been like, he's been that way since I've met him. Um, and, um, you know, uh, most of us kind of join in on that cause, no matter who the player is, no matter what the sport is. And Otis is just such a good guy that he draws people from every sport, all athletes and all different types of uh, sports. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's, gonna, it's no wonder it's a, it's a big cause and, uh, and a lot of guys are showing up for it. Offering memorabilia and holding charitable events like this golf tournament help the foundation raise much needed funding for those who need it most. We live in a different day and age now where kids don't get out as much anymore and they're not as active anymore. Their social skills have kind of gone down because of the internet and Twitter and all the different social media things. Uh, so we try to, you know, as, as athletes, we try to help kids get out and, and participate in things and be social, as well as help uh, underprivileged kids uh, kind of have a chance at life and, and let them know that there are people out, out there, former athletes or whatnot, uh, to try to help them along through life. So these organizations, and especially the one like Otis is doing, um, tries to hit that point. You can go and get further information at Otis, uh, www otisnixonfoundation.org www.otisnixonfoundation.org and you can read about what we're doing in the communities uh, if we can help you in a way please feel free to give us a call and you mentioned your uh, website uh, p1 group is www.p1group.com uh, we're a uh, industrial commercial contractor out of kansas city and uh, we're, we're really happy to support the turnaround kids and otis nixon foundation i'm just a small part of the company it's a family-owned company uh, great values, uh, good people, and encourage you to uh, uh, look us up and uh, happy to do work with you. The Hawks enjoyed a phenomenal season, advancing to the Eastern Conference Finals for the first time in franchise history. AIB reporter Jonathan Simmons had the chance to speak with the team center and three-time All-Star Al Horford about what he's been up to off the court. Give me a man, Mr. Jonathan Simmons here for Skybox TV on AIB TV in Atlanta. And one of the nice things about being here in Atlanta is you always get a chance to see what the guys are doing off the field as well as on the field. And I have a gentleman here that uh, I'm sure you know, Mr. Al Horford for the Atlanta Hawks. Al, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Al, what is it that uh, really keeps you motivated as far as being involved with the schools? I noticed this year you've, you've been to about six or seven schools. What's kind of been the engine behind that? Uh, just to uh, stress the importance of um, uh, li living a healthy life style and uh, kids to stay active um, you know I'm real passionate about that and uh, and I think that you know the earlier we can start encouraging that the better and and that's why I've been doing these school visits now one of the things I got a chance to see which I don't get too often is that when I went to see you down at Southside your dad actually was there and he talked about the fact that he played for the Bucks how big of an influence was he on you being involved in the community so much as you are here with the Hawks it's a big influence uh, my dad that's something that you know my family and I have always taken pride and is trying to make a difference, you know, wherever we're at. And um, and he used to do it. He still does it. And, um, and and I just try to do the same. And now what was it that kind of really brought you? I see this alliance for a healthier generation. Um, they do a lot of things, obviously, that you talked about, to try to instill habits in kids. Is that one of the reasons why you really got involved with them as a, a community partner? Uh, yeah, no question. Um, you know, I really agree with all their principles, everything that they do and what they believe in. And uh, and it's something that I've been looking for for a long time. And uh, we were able to partner with them. And it's been great. You know, we've really been going through a lot of schools around the Atlanta area and, and really speaking to kids about the importance of taking care of their bodies and living a healthy lifestyle. Now, for people who are watching this, are there any other foundations or community activities that maybe you'd like to tell people about that they don't know? Um, well, I mean, just uh, in general, the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, we you know we work with a bunch of schools around the country, and uh, and it's and it's a, a really good foundation that helps it reaches out to a lot of kids. Well, the one thing I have noticed is that the Hawks really seem to be fully engaged. Uh, we're going to see your uh, your CEO hopefully later on today, and I noticed that you guys had a great event where you brought a young man in and really helped him. He was uh, involved. I think he had leukemia, and uh, you brought him in and actually signed him as a player for the day. 
How is it for you as a player to be part of an organization that has that kind of, of energy and importance on community activities? Uh, it's very important. Um, you know, uh, we feel like we have a responsibility with our community here, and we take a lot of pride in uh, making a difference um, here in Atlanta. We want people to feel us, want people to know that, that we care about them. You know, they support us, and we want to get in and support them as well. Last but not least, how important is it for you uh, to be part of a Hawk team that really is a record-breaking team in the same year that they honor an all-time Hawk legend, uh, Dominique Wilkins? It couldn't have been any better. I mean, uh, you know, Dominique is, is Hawks basketball, and, and and for us to be doing what we're doing this year and him getting nominated, it's 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 just it's just a great year to be a Hawks fan. Well, I think that sums it up best. With Al Horford, center of the Atlanta Hawks, the minister, Jonathan Simmons here for Skybox TV, bringing to you the community service from off the field. Previously on Skybox, golf pro Dave Anderson and performance trainer Chad Cook provided tips on improving the golf game of junior players. In this edition of Skybox, Dave offers helpful tips for more experienced golfers. All right, let's talk about what makes a ball go up in the air. You know, everybody says it's angle and how you strike and you gotta hit down, and those things are all true. But the real reality of it is, what makes a ball go up in the air is the dimples on the ball. It's kind of like wings on a bird or on a plane. So what happens is, as we strike that golf ball, the club is working downward. The club obviously has angle on the face. As it runs across the grooves on the face, it makes the ball spin backwards. As the ball spins backwards, that's what uh, has the ball catch the air and makes it rise. So, you know, so many people believe that what makes a golf ball actually go up in the air is trying to swing up at it. But the reality of it is it's the dimples. So if we want the ball to go up in the air, we have to hit the little ball, which is the golf ball, and then the big ball, which is the earth. Now that would be with the irons and maybe your hybrids and fairway woods. But with the driver, you'd catch that a little bit more on the upswing. So with the iron is mainly what we're talking about. If you want the ball to go up, you can't swing up, you actually have to feel like you're going to swing down and hit into the ground. Now that's how you make the ball go up. So my next question would be, is it possible to hit the golf ball straight? And the answer is no. And the reason is, we're swinging on an arc and we're standing next to the golf ball. So the minute we, we're swinging on this angle, it's impossible to go straight. The only way the ball could ever go straight is if we were to keep the shaft on a perfectly straight uh, line here. So the minute it's, it's on a bent plane or uh, it's got lean in it, it's, no, it's impossible to go straight. So now you have two shots that you can hit. You could hit a shot as the club were to come in and you were to put top spin on it. So as the club were to come in and I'm actually, the club is rotating over, top spin like in tennis or ping pong, that would be one way to hit it. Or you could actually, if you were to come in and the back of the club was a little bit behind the toe of the club, as it was coming through, you would hit cut spin and the ball would turn to the right. So is it possible to hit the ball straight? No. And one of the things that we found is that most people are living in the world of straight. And with golf, there's so much more to it than that rotary motion. And in the future, we're gonna share a little bit with you on, the, on, the, on a compass that will allow you to understand that better. Okay, so now we've got our ball close to the green, but we're not on the green yet. The green is where you have the hole in the flag. Okay, so we have three options. We could use our putter, we could use our hybrid, or we could use one of our wedges or some kind of an iron with a little bit of loft on it. Let me show you how to use all of them. With the putter, basically what we wanna do is get our thumbs on top of the club. What we wanna do is get the club between our forearms. We wanna bend from our waist and get our eyes over the golf ball. And we wanna have the same length backswing as forward swing. With the hybrid, we're gonna use the same putting stroke. This is the hybrid. We're gonna use the same putting stroke. Our weight is gonna be slightly leaning on our front foot, our left foot. Maybe 5% more on our front foot, so 55% of our weight on our, on our left side, 45 on our right. On this one, again, we wanna make sure that the lengths match the backswing and the forward swing. A lot of times, people will say, it's kinda like a piece of pizza. It's the ball we're here. I wanna make the same length backswing as forward swing. Okay, so the shot would look something like this, where the ball is, same place you'd have your putter, maybe centered of slightly in front. Again, we're just gonna make a nice pendulum stroke, keeping our eyes down, not allowing our head to come up. There's a saying I like to say, you can see a bad shot by 
looking up early, or you can hear a good shot by keeping your eyes fixed. And then the third option would be one of our wedges. This one's a little more difficult. I would really suggest that you get really good with that hybrid around the green first, and then grab the wedge. So putt when you can, hybrid when you can't use uh, the putter because you're a little too far out, maybe eight to 10 feet out. And then beyond that, you would probably use your, some sort of a wedge depending on how much elevation you needed. So on this one here, the ball is gonna be positioned off my right foot. My weight is gonna be leaning towards my left. Sternum is trying to get it in front of the golf ball. I wanna choke down and line the shaft up with my front arm. And the last thing you wanna do on this is you wanna keep your eyes down again till you hear the ball land. So again, you can hear a good shot or see a bad shot. So now we're in the sand trap. Some people call it a sand pit, some people call it a bunker, but it's the, uh, the area that like, looks like this, there's sand, okay? So um, the best way to learn how to hit this shot is the first thing I would do is draw a line in the bunker. And I would get my front foot, my, my left foot or heel right on that line. Then what I would wanna do is, so I've got the ball forward, my weight is leaning forward, I've got the club face, slanted and aimed over to the right. I want to make a nice full swing and it's very, very important on this shot to not allow your legs to change. I always say you want to keep your, your tail kind of towards the sand. You can't let those legs straighten. The other thing we've got to make sure is we keep our front arm nice and long. We can't let it bend. So if you don't straighten your legs and you don't bend this arm, you'll have a great chance of getting out. So how we first practice this is draw this line. Get the ball forward, weight forward, aim the face to the right, make a nice full swing. And again, we gotta make sure we don't change the distance from the ball either with our arm or our body. We just practice trying to hit that line. We'd move up and just try to hit that line. We wanna be even, evenly taking uh, the sand out on both sides of it. You'll hear people say, hit two inches behind it and all these different things. What we wanna do is get our swing lower than the golf ball. Okay, so the shot would look actually something like this. Ball forward, weight forward. The club and my arm are fully extended. I'm sitting low with my legs, a lot of bend. But I want to make sure I just make that nice full swing. Well, that's it for this edition of Skybox. Thanks for letting us be a part of your day. I'm Craig Corbin. On behalf of the team, We'll see you next time right here on Skybox.